So welcome back to SoFun. Um, we have some new, some more projects for you and hope you enjoy it. So this is the chai tea. Um, it's by Liesl and Company, a great little t-shirt. It says the difficulty is two scissors. So I didn't think it was too awfully bad. It comes in five sizes. I made the large and it turned out perfect. So the first t-shirt I made was out of some scraps that I had left over from a sweater that I made. So I didn't have quite enough for sleeves. And I'm like, well, I have the fabric, we'll just make it. It turned out perfect. Fits exactly like it needs to, it's just awesome. So then I have lots of fabric, like let's try another one with sleeves. And this is it. This is a slinky knit. It wasn't hard to sew with slinky knit. Um, just make sure you use a ballpoint needle um, what's nice with the sleeves is you don't have to hem them, they're folded, so it's on the inside, so no hemming there. What's nice with this is there's just a little pleat up here on the front, so it just gives you a little bit of something on the t-shirt. Do a binding for the, the ribbing around the neckline, so it looks kind of like coat binding. I made it a little bit longer, so it'll kind of cover my hips a little bit, but I love this pattern. It comes in all the different sizes, so you do need to use Swedish tracing paper to trace it out, get the pattern, the size you want, so that you're not cutting up into something and then making a different size later. You'll have all the sizes if you just trace it out with the Swedish tracing paper. So then we have the J. Lee Charlotte cardigan. J. Lee patterns are really nice. They come in sizes from 2T up through size 24 in adults. So I usually end up making about a size 16. I had this lovely fabric that it kind of looks a little like Cookie Monster. And this is my cardigan. It does have ribbing around the sleeves, ribbing on the bottom, and a front fold. So you can put um, buttons on it or not. I didn't do buttons. It comes in two lengths. This is the longer version. I did put a little bit of stretch elastic in the shoulder seam, so it kind of gives it a little more stability. I used my serger on the whole thing, and it just turned out perfect. And this is the size 16. Okay, this pattern is called is from Funky Friends Fabric. It's Easter Bunny Buddies. It is so cute. Look at this little guy. They have directions. Um, the directions are really good. I made them out of minky. If you've never made a few stuffed animals before, I would not suggest starting with minky. It was a little bit challenging, but not hard, just a little more challenging. You have to make sure all of your nap goes the right way and everything when you cut them out. There are lots of pattern pieces, but her directions are really good. She actually has a sew along on her website. It tells you exactly how to sew the entire thing step by step. So I went through that, looked at the directions a little bit, and we have the bunny here. You can use, instead of using felt eyes, you can get the safety eyes so that the kids can't pull the eyes out and choke on them or something. Um, all our little animals need a little bow on them. I love the way the feet just kind of dangle. I did use this little tool. It's called the purple thing. You guys probably have one if you have been sewing for a while. If you haven't, it's really nice. Pointer on one end, kind of a square on the other. You can't really iron minky so well. So when you get done making the bunny pieces, when you turn them inside out, just use this thing to round out the edges. And it's kind of like pressing it from the outside in. And it worked really, really nicely to help smooth him out. Um, also, if you're trying to stuff smaller things, can use these forceps, put the stuffing in it, and poke it into little spots. His nose was a little fun to poke, get the stuffing in there really well. So these little forceps work really nice for that. Um, he would look just as cute out of fabric as he is out of minky, but this is the Funky Friends Easter Bunny Buddies. So these were daily inspirations by Janine Babbage. We all love her stuff. I made this cute little wall hanging. Put a little sleeve on the back so you can hang it. I did my binding on this on the bias, so striped binding always looks adorable on the bias. 
this took about 25 minutes to sew up. There's three designs. Wherever you go, take your own sunshine. Friendship doubles the joy and do small things with great love. And they're just adorable. You can make them into placemats, wall hangings, whatever you want. But these are the Daily Inspirations by Janine Babich. The finished size is about 12 by 15. So this is the Tote Bags by Deb Shore, the Build-A-Bag book. She has templates in here to make the different tote purses. It's a nice hardcover book that lays flat also. So there's quite a few different things in here. A nice little drawstring bag if you have some gifts to give away. It's a nice little double pocket tote if you kind of have an office on the go in your car or something. You can put a bunch of supplies in here. Sewing supplies or sewing or office supplies, either way would work great. They have all these directions here on which part of the template to use. The templates are just two plastic things. They do slide around a bit, so I just put some double stick tape on the back to hold it where I need it to be. Draw around it with a blue Sharpie and then use my scissors or rotary cutter to cut it out. So they have templates for rounded flaps, pointed flaps, the insets for your zippers, um, how to cut out the edges for different bags, what sizes and everything. So templates and everything. Another cute bag was this little crafty organizer. Be another great thing to take for classes and stuff. These are the two I made. So this is just a nice little bag. It has a pocket on the back, a little flap on the front that snaps, some handles. There's a pocket on the inside, but it would be great to take file folders and everything with you. When I go to clients' houses and whatever, I have all the file folders of what I'm doing with them with me. So these will all fit in here and then it will still go in my computer bag also. So I have everything together. Really cute thing to make up. Didn't take very long at all. I used Soft and Stable in this. Um, did some quilting on it and that was about it. I love the way this knotted purse went together. It has a zipper on the top of it. Um, I love the bow knot on the front here. The way she did this inside zipper was amazing. Um, I've never seen it done this way before, and it was just went together so perfectly. Had a couple of pockets on the inside. I just used 987 fusible fleece with this, so you can, it doesn't have to be nice and super soft or heavy like this one, but just a cute little purse to take around with you. So this book is called Sarah Payne's Quilt School. This takes you from how to quilt from the very beginning all the way to the end. Different complex projects in it or super easy projects and really good directions on how to use it. So the first one, there's quite a few things in here that I love. There's a basic, you guys have all heard the, you know, the toss nine patch. They have directions in here for that too. So if you've never done that, you've got the directions for that. Um, it even tells you how to do a French braid table runner. It goes over basics like pressing, sewing, cutting, making sure you get a quarter inch seam, all of that information. And then how to bind, how to do your quilting, free motion, in the ditch, all of that. So it's a great little book. It takes you through the whole quilting process. So the first quilt I made out of this book is this blue Drunkard's Path quilt. You can use this um, Circle Savvy Ruler by Creative Grids. What's great is you can cut all of these different sizes of Drunkard's Path. Um, Creative Grid rulers have the stuff on the back so it's not going to wriggle around. I use a seven and a half inch block. I've had this fabric for like 10 years and I've always wanted to do this quilt with it and it's finally done. I love the way it turned out. It was not very hard to make. Um, the layout, I just googled on Pinterest um, different layouts to use and came up with this one. I think it looked the best with the fabrics I had and love this thing. It's my new favorite quilt. And this was another quilt that was in the book. What I like about this book also is they show you different ways you can lay out the quilt. There, this is just half square triangles, but there's many different ways you can lay out half square triangles. I just chose just a basic chevron look because I love chevrons. Um, this I use actually a charm pack for. 
You can use scraps, whatever. Scraps would look great to make this quilt with. It's a nice little baby size quilt. Um, it goes together really quickly. I did wash this. Someone asked me what the fabric, what your quilt will look like if it's washed, if you don't pre-wash your fabric. So this is what it looks like. It does look like it's been around a little while, kind of old fashioned looking. So it just shrinks up a tiny bit, not too much. I never pre-wash any of my quilting fabric. I just wash it once I get the quilt made and this is what you get. This last quilt I have is the Tokyo Terrace. It comes in two sizes, 72 by 90 or 54 by 60. I made this at 54 by 60. These were scraps from another quilt that I made. Really quickly, it went together really well. Um, just a lot of little two and a half inch squares here, big pieces. I just love the way it turned out. I did um, kind of a really patterned quilt to kind of go along with these swirls of the flowers. So a good way to figure out how to pick your fabrics, a lot of people always ask, well, how do you get your fabrics all to coordinate? So you start with this fabric, has lots of colors in it, and then you pull out different colors to match. So a little bit of pink, the purple, a little bit of green, then pick out some greens to go with that, and that's how you get your fabrics to match up. Start with your focus fabric and pull out a few colors from there that you really like and go with that. So really cute little quilt, great little thing. You can make it with some guy colors also instead of just girl stuff, but it's a nice, easy project to make up. So there's just a few little notions that we have here for you that aren't necessarily something you make with or something. So this is a sweater comb. Sometimes we always get those sweaters that have fuzzy stuff on them. This just takes care of all those fuzzies. Just wipe it on there and they're all gone. So pretty cool little gadget. And you can never have enough measuring things in your sewing room. This is called the yard sticker. It is one yard long, 36 inches. You can lay it on the front of your sewing table. It's sticky, so you just peel off the back, lay it down, and then you have a nice measure right there handy for you to use. So really cool little guy. And then I love this Hugo's Amazing Tape. It's self-adhering reusable tape. This is the two inch size. When you have big spools of thread, you can wrap this around it. It contains it. It doesn't, that way all your threads are in one spot. It's also great for wrapping your cords together, wrapping your hoops together. Um, if you're moving, it kind of works like shrink wrap, just wrap everything together, but it's reusable. And this roll will last you a lifetime, but it's great to have around for everything. Even your husbands will like it. And then I use this Quilter Select Free Fuse. It's not on your sofa list this month, but I used it on pretty much all of the small things that I quilted. So it's just a powder. Take off the lid, shake it onto your project, iron it, and quilt. It's super fast. It's not as sticky as using a spray adhesive or anything. And this is just my new favorite thing. So I use this on the purses, the wall hangings, the table runner, pretty much everything this month I use this stuff. So really cool stuff. And then one other cute little gadget we have, this is called the chain ripper. So it's a little suction cup thingy, put it down, got a, just a basic seam ripper on it. And when you doing all of your quilts and your chain piecing everything, just set it down and you can just sit there and clip them with this instead of having to use scissors to clip everything apart. And then you can put the top back on it so it doesn't hurt you. So really cool little gadget. So we got this in late. It actually came in this morning as we're doing the taping. It is a very pretty jelly roll from Maywood Studios and it's got music on it. There are grays and whites and blacks in it um, and it's all music themed. So just beautiful. I love this. So I need a new quilt for the piano room. So this will be it. So thanks for watching. This is our final episode for June So Fun. Next month we will have some new projects for you. It will be taped again. So in the meantime, keep calm and so on.